welcome back to the Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show. Happy to have you along. Time for your garden questions and our garden answers. If you've got a question, send it on over to GardenTalkRadio at gmail.com. That's GardenTalkRadio at gmail.com. Or you can send us an e- uh, give us a call at toll-free, coast-to-coast at 1-800-927-SHOW. That's 1-800-927-7469. And uh, we will get you the answer to the question that you have. So let's go through and see what we can get through here. Uh, First question is, I'm in Ann Arbor, Michigan. The leaves on my lilacs are turning black and curling up. I thought lilacs were impervious to almost any problem now they look like they might die any ideals that's john listening to us on waam wham radio 1600 am and 92.7 fm all right so lilac blight is um is an airborne disease and that's what this sounds like it sounds like it's likely lilac blight it can occur at any time so it and it can spread through areas etc and unfortunately it could kill off a lilac plant but the good news is is that you can prune it like as soon as you see it you can prune it so you would prune it and then you would throw those lilac into lake michigan branches or whatever you want to call <laughs> ann arbor isn't near lake michigan <laughs> no um you can throw the lilac branches or whatever you want to call that's them holly's answer for a lot of things just throw it right in the lake michigan <laughs> oh yeah i say even in lake michigan yeah. uh-huh that's what you that's why yeah. you said that um i no, do say that put, but I, put the put the d- 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 diseased limbs and leaves in the trash yes you don't want to put them in your compost you don't want to burn them you don't want to put them in your street or city or whatever compost you want to put them directly in the trash because you don't want a chance um that blight spreading and it could be a problem and once you do that you just you know you're not being a kind citizen essentially so make sure you do get that in the trash and and get rid of it and then hopefully you know it'll do better you can possibly spray some copper fungicide on that a lot of these university extension websites say that it's not always proven for blight you could try you know if you really like your lilac bush give it a go all right you cover fall garden cleanup i know many people in the northern u.s kind of stop after labor day Many of my plants are still growing strong. When should I stop gardening, or is there a better time frame than Labor Day to clean the garden out? I feel like this is... Well, not everybody stops at Labor Day. No, not every... And I feel like this is kind of... I don't want to say it's like old-timer advice, but I feel like this is when we had more consistent seasons, and our seasons didn't like blend together and overlap so much, whereas now it seems like, you know, our, our fall, our summer really bleeds into fall, and now we have, you know, successful growth of a lot of things. Well, there's a certain there's labor. a certain caliber of gardener that goes, well, the garden's shot. It's full of weeds. I'm done. We'll just take the lawnmower, mow it over, and we'll fix it in the spring. Right. But if your plants are still producing, yes. why, you know, why would you do that? Why would you do that? Because somebody told me. Somebody told me. Yeah. And that's fair. And that makes sense. And that's probably how you were raised or your neighbor told you or whatever, or your coworker, who knows. But um, if you're like, especially if your tomato plants are still blossoming and blooming and putting on tomatoes, don't stop. We, so you we've can had toma- of- yeah, we've had tomato plants up to the day of frost still have producing tomatoes. Yeah. So you can what you can do is you can what you can do is you can kind of assess the situation. Your tomatoes at some point will stop producing as much, especially especially if they are. Um, what are the what are the determinant determinant. Indeterminate. So indeterminate will produce all season long. Yeah. Determinate one big crop and still produce slightly some throughout the rest of the growing season. So if you get to the point where you're like, you know what, I've just had enough tomatoes. You can, you can. What you can do is you it, can yank them out. No, no, no. Don't yank them out. Get a hold of your city hall and find out if they have a food pantry that will take tomatoes. Because we are in a situation now, whether you want to admit it or not, we even though if you're listening in the United States, it's supposed to be the greatest country in the world, and it is, there's still 25% of people don't know where their next meal is going to come from. And these food pantries are very difficult to come up with the, the produce that they need in order to fill the baskets each week for the people who really do need it. So figure out where you can distribute your excessive or over amount of produce in your garden to benefit somebody else. Yes. 
So you want to, yeah, you can definitely give the food away. And we're not just talking about tomatoes, any produce that, and there are programs that will take the fresh produce. But call before you go to see if they will accept it because there are certain food pantries that do not accept fresh produce. You could probably Google, you know, food pantry, fresh produce, and put your zip code in or whatever. There are different programs. So that's a good thing to keep in mind too. So you can kind of feel it out. I would not use Labor Day as a hard and fast rule. I would probably, take Labor Day off and then start again. <laughs> I would probably use something like October 15th because I think that's our first frost date, you know, uh, to give myself a time frame. But yeah, I would not do that. Okay. When is a good time to harvest watermelon? Is there a secret tip to this? Yeah. So what you can tell when the spot, the spot where the fruit touches the ground becomes more prominent and changes color. So it'll look kind of yellow. I'm sure you've seen like watermelon. Even in the white. Store. Yeah, or white. You can see watermelons at the store will have that yellowish, almost like white scabby spot. So when you turn your watermelon over and you see that, that's a, a good sign. The other sign is that the tendrils around the stem will often turn brown or and curl and curl and dry up. Um, the stem will also usually kind of start to look a little bit meh. If you if you've gone too long, the the watermelon will actually tell you it will crack open. Yes. So you don't want to do that. You do want to pay attention. If you think it's close to being harvested, check it every day. It's n- And here's the other thing. If you've harvested it too early, this is not like a tomato where you can just take it on the counter and set it there for a couple of days and it'll ripen. It's all it's going to ripen outside before you harvest it. It's not going to ripen after you harvest it. It doesn't work that way. No. So I wouldn't be like, I'm going to be on the safe side and pull it early. I would wait until you see those signs. The the bottom or whatever you want to call it is turning the, that yellowish the, the white. portion that contacts the ground yeah um is turning yellowish white and then also the tendrils around the stem turning brown curling and falling off okay there are many re- uh, i have a lot of dragonflies around uh here in late summer do you know why well there's several different reasons why you might have a lot of dragonflies humming around and buzzing around your particular area. Some dragonflies migrate south for the fall, similar to birds. Uh, Where the show originates in Wisconsin, you might see dragonflies gathering in masses in late summer as they prepare to migrate. Green or darker uh, color often seems uh, larger swarms as they migrate south for the winter. A population explosion, dragonfly population might occur, and that'll give you more of a swarm. A seasonal prey movement. Uh, we're in an area now uh, in, in certain parts of the country where you're getting rain, like literally tropical rain every afternoon at 3 o'clock. It's like we all live in Florida at certain times. So there's a lot of moisture, which means there's a lot of mosquitoes, and the dragonfly feeds off mosquitoes. So if you have a lot of dragonflies, you probably have in, in, there's a possibility you have a lot of mosquitoes and those dragonflies will eat the mosquitoes. So that's another reason. Uh, new emer- newly emerged yeah. adults. So they lay their eggs in large group. And then when the newly emerged adults come out, they do seem to kind of come in waves. But I think, yeah, I think it's just kind of a seasonal things and they are beneficial yep. to ecosystems. They eat um, mosquitoes, insects. That's one of the primary. Um, nips. Yeah. yeah, nips. That's one of the primary things. So if you see a lot of mosquitoes wherever you're at, enjoy them. They're very pretty to look at. Do not swat at them. They're not harming anything. They're not going to harm you. So uh, they are a benefit to your 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 garden, your house, your everything. So your, your area, your ecosystem, all the good things. Yes. I want to grow. Uh, I want to grow okra next year. Can you give me any advice on doing such? I'm in southeast Wisconsin. Well, you can grow okra in the north. We have done it. It's not as prominent as it would be if you were in Louisiana or South Tennessee or anything like that. But it can be done. Now there are burgundy varieties. There are green varieties. There are 135 varieties of okra in the world. Not all of them are commercially available. They are also known as ladyfingers. And what you want to find out, uh, well, first make sure, I know you want to grow it, and we've kind of joked about that on the program every now and then. Oh, you, you want to grow okra. Do you like grow okra? Not really. Then why are you it's growing because them? I don't like okra. I know you don't like okra. Uh, so be sure you like okra. Now, find it at a farmer's market. That's going to be your best 
uh, avenue of freshness than at the store. So figure out what you can, what varieties are available, and then uh, you really don't want to start them in a starting tray. They have a very thick and long taproot, and that can get damaged in transplanting. So you would have to figure out where you're located in southeast Wisconsin or wherever, whomever else is listing that wants to grow it. Start it early in the in the spring, but it is like a tomato. It's, it doesn't like frost. Uh, full sun, a lot of water. It loves the heat, so put it in the hottest portion of the garden and keep the water to it and uh, harvest the uh, okra in decent sized pieces you don't want to go too large because it will get woody it is a relative of what is it the hibiscus plant they have beautiful flowers uh whenever they start developing uh on the on the on the plant and here's another tip if you have family members that do not like the sliminess of okra dehydrate it, it the sliminess goes away uh, i enjoy deep fried okra uh it is it is nice you don't like okra at all. We know that. That's why we're not. That's why you're not talking about it. <laughs> it's very good. It has its purpose. And and like, like, like gumbo. Gumbo has doesn't get, does not gumbo have okra. I don't like gumbo uh, okay. either. Right. I don't like it in gumbo. Okay. I'll pick it out. Just like cooked celery. All right. Well, so I hope that helps. And uh, you certainly can grow okra in the northern areas. It's not a southern crop. Well, with that being said, it's uh, reached that portion of the program where we discuss what we learned today. And I learned that I was not aware that some nut trees can take up to 10 years before they start maturing and putting uh, produce on. That is a very long, um, patient process before you're able to harvest something that you planted. I just learned that there's a plethora of nut trees that you can grow in the northern parts of the United States. And I also learned that some of them are like shrubs versus trees, which I think is cool. Like if I was going to grow one, I probably would grow more of the shrub ones. Well, what we learned today is brought to you by Honey Bee Healthy. Honeybeehealthy.com is serious about the business of bees and helping beekeepers maintain healthy and thriving hives. Whether you're a professional beekeeper or a bee hobbyist, we've got the products to help you maintain a healthy hive. Honeybee Healthy products are made in the USA. Visit honeybeehealthy.com. Tune in 